I'm standing here freezing my ass off with Bo Anderson from Green, and we're going to talk about the story of Green and how it all started out. So, how did you start out with Green? Well, uh, that's actually uh, a very long story. We've been around for about 10 years now as a company. Uh, it was actually me and my brother started in the basement at our mother's and father's house. So, uh, we started out doing like demos for the Amiga back in the good old days where you just can do you know a game with two or three persons uh, we early on found that this was the the thing for us really like the thing that we want to do with our lives so uh, we were doing like you know demos games stuff like that but on a very small scale back in like 86 87 kept on doing it for a while like freelance like everybody else but in uh, 97 we decided like no you know we want to go for it so we basically uh, started doing a technology together with uh, NVIDIA which is uh, at the time was a very small uh, 3D acceleration uh, company uh, so basically started to build out the engine with a couple of guys over the net and uh, the company really came about in 99 uh, when we started hiring a lot of people to do our first project uh, it was called Ballistics uh, we were then located in Linköping, which is uh, a bit of south uh, east of here, or southwest of here rather. Uh, and uh, we were about 10 people at the time uh, building ballistics. So uh, 10 people made a game that chipped over 2 million units uh, in OEM and in sales. So that was kind of a success, and that really got us going. Uh, and we could start like building serious, serious games uh, like bandits and so on. So moving back to the good old days, can you tell us something about the first project that you and your brother made? We did uh, something called Gnuttana, which was like small furry animals uh, that we made a small game about. And we kind of twisted it a bit because it's very cute and, you know, cozy animals at the time. Um, so what we did was introduce the monster into the Gnutt world uh, that had a chainsaw. So you could basically go through this cute landscape with, you know, all these fussy animals and cut them up with a chainsaw. So that's basically how we started out. Um, that's, I think, Ulf's twisted mind yeah, at works, and it just escalated from there. And it's still present in Green? It's still present very much, yeah, but uh, he's got a bigger budget, so it's more dangerous nowadays. So tell us about your first game, Ballistics. Uh, Ballistics was this crazy idea that Ulf had one night when he was looking at the screensaver. Uh, the screensaver was this tube going back and forth, basically, the standard Windows one. And he was thinking like, you know what, what if you actually drive inside that thing, you know? And uh, after a few weeks, we, we bounced the idea back and forth. And uh, we came up with the concept of 360 movement. And we came up with the idea of free speed. So basically, there's no speed limit to this one. Uh, you can actually go, you know, some people have been going like 3,500 miles per hour. Uh, you ha have to have some decent reflexes for it. And uh, yeah, basically, we, uh, we pitched it to NVIDIA uh, to promote the first pixel shader that they were doing. Uh, and it came out as the first pixel shader game. It was presented at uh, the Eiffel Tower at their launch, the GeForce 3 launch. Uh, together with, I think it was id and Crytek and us. Um, so it was a big launch. And we got basically uh, famous overnight in the technology era. Um, so that was pretty cool. Can you tell us about uh, the arcade and how that came to be? Well, uh, it was by chance actually. We were at E3 showing the game and uh, one of the vendors went you know, just checking through the halls. It was in one of these small halls, the, the Kentia Hall, the, the basement, suitable for us at the time. Um, and they were walking by and when they saw this thing, they called a manufacturer and said like, you know, you got to come down to the floor and check it out because this could be a good arcade game. And, and the guy named uh, Ernest Yale came down and saw it and uh, we've been friends since, you know, uh, and we've been doing several arcade machines since. And uh, yeah, they picked it up and we designed the, the whole thing together and uh, now it's uh, still selling after six years. So what, what's it like to walk into an arcade and see your own game standing there? Yeah, well, it's a bit different. I mean, you know, you, I walked into a lot of stores and see my game on the, on the shelf, but walking into an arcade hall is, is completely different because people are actually interacting with the thing and you can see that they're having fun. Uh, and it's also nice to walk up uh, to a group and just be able to play and, you know, beat them senseless, you know, because I know this game after a few years, so that's, that's pretty cool.